Hello everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings uh, to watching every single piece of Shonen Jump anime that is available to us and is actually in English because both of us don't know Japanese. And we plan to do this for every single series. Our main one being Gintama and our other two being Kuroko's Basketball. And this is going to be the end of JJ K Talk for a bit because we're going to be talking about the movie finally <laughs> that we've been putting yeah. off for so long because <laughs> we kept running into issues with timing it. What we're gonna be talking about today is Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. The f- what is it? the film? I forget. There's like an added to Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie. That is the official title of it, which is the first Jujutsu Kaisen movie, which released back in 2021. Yeah, man, when 2021? Remember that year, Zen? It was a it was a better time. Was better it? Time. <laughs> 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 they were maybe you know what maybe i sp- maybe i was too wrong about you pandemic times <laughs> i didn't realize how much i missed you. 2021 was you know i got to work from home in 2021 from a job that sucked so you know what fair enough fair enough actually i, I would actually say it's true but my life was so bad before the pandemic <laughs> that the pandemic made everyone on such terrible equal planes that i didn't look as bad <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway so yeah this is the first movie from jujutsu kaisen uh probably not the last one get ready for when they release the gojo versus Sukuna movie. Uh, <laughs> the dreaded fear of every single <laughs> jujutsu kaisen the train will never be forgiven uh but before we get into the actual movie of it i figured it'd be fun to talk about the actual how well did this movie actually do in theaters because it it did release in theaters in 2021 and like i said at the beginning it was the pandemic time which is not a great time for movies at all it was borderline almost every single theater was getting close to being closed off (laughs) so how well did this one do well in Japan, funny enough, uh, it was supposed to only open up in 14 theaters and 28 screens, and every single ticket sold out on the first day, and they had to expand it to more screens because too many people were going to go see the Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen movie. Um, and by the end of it, by the the weekend gross, it ended up coming in first with 23.5 million, or 2,694 billion yen, which is how they do it there, doing the conversion. And yeah, it was the highest uh, earning movie in all of Japanese box office for 2021, doing better even than uh, Evan- Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time. God damn, this is why no one went to see your movie, Evangelion. <laughs> your titles, <laughs> they're getting too crazy. <laughs> and yeah, it ended up being one of the highest grossing. It's... In A for all time highest anime films in Japan. Um, do you want to take a quick guess? Of, uh, do you have any idea what the other seven above uh, Jujutsu Movie Kaisen was? One of them for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I... Is this in Japan? Or in in Japan, just in Japan. Um, okay. I will Something say Slam Dunk related. I hope. I assume. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll say so. The first Slam Dunk is on there. Okay, something One Piece related. Uh, One Piece film red, which uh, we covered on here with D Free. Yes, it's on okay. there. Um, I I would be very surprised if you got the other one. So I'm just gonna end it here and say you got the right ones from. <laughs> <laughs> is is one of them Spirited Away? Some Miyazaki thing. Uh, Spirited Still Away is on there. Yes. So okay. I'll just give them out. You oh, right, you right. did very well. Um, above Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, it is Weathering with You, and then it is uh, Suzumi, and then it's Ponyo, and then it's the first Slam Dunk, and then it's Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, One Piece Film Red, Your Name, You Spirited Away at number two, and then at number one is of course Demon Slayer, The Mugen Train. Uh, which, oh god, I did not realize it was number one. That thing made an ungodly amount of money. Yeah, it made a horrifying amount of money. <laughs> oh man, it's insane. So that's how well it did in Japan. And over here, it also did pretty well. Um, it actually got second place. Do you know what was in first place? The same um, release time as the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie. For anime movies? Or no, 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 general? for the same on the box office weekend. 
oh, I feel like I knew this. It came in second, time. and this movie came in first. I feel like I knew this back when, when JJK was coming out, but I've forgotten by now. Okay. It, it was the Batman. <laughs> the Batman! That's what it was. Because I remember going to see the Batman and Jujutsu Kaisen, like, back, like, almost back to back. It was, it was a hell of a time for dudes. Dude. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was dude theater time. It 100% was, because uh, men made up about 61% of the audience during the opening for Jujutsu Jujutsu Kaisen. And yeah, and in terms of anime movies, it does pretty well. It's the six currently with um, Your Name, Ponyo, How's Moving Castle, Spirited Away, and uh, Mugen Train being number one, of course, which is also the number one anime movie <laughs> for us over here. So yeah, that's the backstory. So this did extremely well for them. Uh, so let's move on and go into the actual synopsis now. Okay, so in uh, we, we, the movie begins, someone is being bullied. Uh, he's getting bullied pretty bad, and it looks like he's freaking out. Um, it looks like the bullies are going to like push him, and then the kid ends up saying, like, please don't get near me, because you're going to get hurt. Um, and it ends up being that a cursed spirit activates and immediately injures every single one of his bullies. I don't know if they're dead, but I'm pretty sure they all got shoved into lockers, so I assume that they died. I think they say at some point that they don't die, but they're, like, super fucked up. Yeah, it makes sense. They they look super fucked up. So this is the introduction uh, introduction of Yuta. Yuta has him on him a cursed spirit, and the higher ups of Jujutsu society want to basically kill him. And uh, Yuta is okay with the idea, but everyone that keeps kind of going after him keeps dying. He's accidentally killed like um, multiple sorcerers who have tried to execute him, so they've called in Gojo, and Gojo goes, "No, nah, I'm not doing that." And so he recruits Yuta instead <laughs> to Jujutsu High. Um, um, Yuta goes into there and he explains that his cursed spirit is Rika, which is a childhood friend of his who he promised to marry. But Rika died in a freak accident, and ever since then she turned into a cursed spirit. Um, so he goes and he goes to Jujutsu High. Uh, Gojo kind of tells him, like, hey, aren't you gonna be lonely by yourself? He, he ends up talking him into joining it because at this point Yuta just wants to die. But Gojo kind of convinces him to at least give it a shot to go to uh, the high school. So Yuta goes there and he's introduced to Maki, Inumaki, and Panda, who all immediately go to attack him the second he enters because when he enters the door all they can immediately feel rika's presence and it scares the shit out of him uh yuta has been graded as special grade which is the highest grade that you can get so they assume that it was some kind of weird test by gojo but it ends up not being and that gojo never explained to him what was going on <laughs> so they f this is where he finally learns what the actual high school is about which is fighting against cursed spirits and they end up backing off he goes on a mission with Maki, and um, he, through it, he, they end up fighting a bunch of cursed spirits, and eventually it ends up being that it looks like a lot of the cursed spirits are actually actively avoiding them, which is likely due to Rika uh, herself, her entire presence in general. But a giant one shows up and ends up eating both of them. While uh, Maki and um, Yuta get eaten, inside the belly they find the two kids. So they went in there to specifically on a mission to get back the boys who were attacked by curses. And if they could not save them, then it would be basically you have to go retrieve the bodies. But they find the two boys there and they're both kind of in a fucked up state. Maki also goes down because now that they're inside the belly of a cursed spirit, she's unable to act actually function inside because being inside of the cursed spirit belly is really bad um so with maki out of commission and the two little boys also in really fucked up streets before maki passes out he she mentions that like hey they don't have a lot of time because they're already kind of injured he ends up activating rika and rika saves the day by just completely fucking up this cursed spirit from within and he carries the boys and Maki to outside of the barrier where Gojo is there, and he's able to save them. Um, while they're all at the hospital, um, Yuta explains that he actually thinks that um, he might have accident he he might have accidentally cursed Rika instead of Rika cursing him, because at this point they all think that. Um, 
Rika is the cursed spirit, it is cursing Yuda, but it might actually be the opposite, where Yuda somehow cursed Rika. And he goes like, that's an interesting theory. We then cut to um, the next mission. He has another mission where he goes off with uh, Inumaki. And Inumaki has... He, the, the mission itself was supposed to be a very easy one. One that he could already handle and Yuta was supposed to only just kind of be absorbing him. But when they go there, uh, another cursed spirit is there. The one that is of higher grade than they expected. And both him and Inumaki kind of fight it. Um, and working together, they're able to, um, <clears throat> working together, they're able to take it down. Uh, this is also, after they take it down, they see that the barrier still won't go down, and we see that Ghetto was inside it the entire time, and it had actually been sicking it on him, and he wanted to meet specifically Rika, but before this mission, Gojo had told him, hey, don't summon Rika, because they were really angry. He doesn't say specifically they were really angry, but he explains, they'll kill you, and then they'll kill me. But previously, the higher-ups had said to him, like, hey, he summoned Rika, and that would have been really bad if he could not control it, because we really don't have a good way of uh, taking care of it ourselves. And he says, it's okay, I was there, and if I wasn't there, then I would have easily given my life to take it down. And they say, well, don't make him do it again, or else we're going to have to, you know, execute him, because the stay of exec execution has only been stayed, it hasn't actually been stopped. And Gojo says, okay, but remember that if uh, you do decide to go after him, I will side with him every single time. So that's why he didn't end up activating it there. So Ghetto has been watching this entire time, and Ghetto, we get a little bit more look into Ghetto's life, which he is currently a, like some kind of spiritual leader is what he's disguising himself as to the general public. Um, he does exercise a curse from a lady who seems to be some kind of <laughs> a weird sexual assault curse spirit, and he's able to take care of that one, no problem, and he puts it in his stomach for later. I don't know why he's keeping that one <laughs> specifically. But I guess any cursed spirit to fight other dudes is useful to him because that's his, his ability is just being able to hold him like a Pokemon trainer. Um, and he also ends up, they, they also show that he super hates humans. He calls them all monkeys. Um, one of the specific monkeys is a rich one and he's asking to have curses removed from him. And he says, well, you're out of money, so I have no use for you, monkey. And the monkey man uh, gets killed by cursed spirits. Um, so yeah, Ghetto currently decides to attack Jujutsu High. And when he attacks Jujutsu High, he goes there and he ends up talking to Yuda. Um, he talks to Yuda and he says specifically, like, hey, I want to create... A society with no cursed spirits not no cursed spirits where there's only sorcerers and there's no humans or monkeys as he calls them uh and while he's talking to him he insults maki because maki doesn't have any cursed energy so he considers her a monkey um and when he insults her he gets on yuda's bad side uh and he is offended because he says that's my friend don't fucking talk about her that way uh and ghetto says my bad i didn't mean to make you angry so that by this point, Gojo shows up and he's there with all the other faculty members of the of the high school. And Ghetto declares that he's going to start a war and he's going to send off a bunch of cursed spirits. I think a thousand of them on Christmas Eve or is yeah Christmas Eve. Um, and if you want to stand any chance against his thousand curses on the city, you're going to have to get everyone to kind of stop me. Um... And Gojo says, like, okay, that's nice, but what's stopping me from just getting rid of you right here, right now? He says, like, well, you can't do that because I have all your students uh, locked down, so you don't want to do that. So he's able to escape from there. Um, so they get the, the principal gets started for the war. They, he says, basically get absolutely everyone that you can and get them to the city because that's our only ha chance of getting all of them, even if there is... A thousand of them, Ghetto has likely gotten a couple of higher grade ones, so we're going to need as many people as possible, which they do. They send off basically everyone but Maki and Yuda, who are left behind in the school. And while the principal's explaining his plan, it actually cuts to Ghetto, and he says, I bet that's what that stupid principal is saying, that muscle-bound the principal is saying. That's not the actual plan. My actual plan only has about like a 20% chance of succeeding at best. 
Um, but I can make it 99%. All I need is Yuta's uh, Curse Spirit Rika. If I had Rika, then I'd be able to basically win. But I can't get Rika at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do this. And while everyone's distracted, I'm going to go jump Yuta and get Rika for myself and kill him. Um, and that's his plan. They, the plan goes forward. Gojo really immediately realizes that something's wrong because he doesn't see Ghetto at the front lines, and he usually would be at the front lines. So he sends back, um, and then it cuts back to the school where Yuda and Maki are having a heart to heart, where Maki talks about how she doesn't have any cursed spirit and uh, cursed energy, and he says like, "Well, I really think you're cool." And I want to join you in whatever you want to do. And I think you're awesome. And she kind of has a flashback about her life. About how nobody actually wants to be like her uh, at all. And so they kind of share a moment. And it looks like she finally is kind of accepting him. Because she says, I don't think I accepted you. Which is girl talk to say, I've accepted you. <laughs> uh, um, then uh, Ghetto is attacking the school. He sets up a barrier around it. So that it would be hard for other people to show up in it and then he attacks and maki starts fighting him gojo realizes what's going on so he sends back panda and inumaki to stall him to stop him from getting to yuda and at this point uh when he sends him back he starts to fight miguel who they have given the miguel the unfortunate task of fighting gojo um and it's more it's even worse now because now he's kind of pissed about what their actual plan is so we cut back to the school and um ghetto is already taking care of maki uh he starts a fight with panda and inumaki uh it kind of looks like he gets got by panda and inumaki after he they tell him to like descend but the fight's not over yet and he takes them both out as well Yuta sees what he's done to his friends, and he basically activates Rika's power, and he becomes, like, super crazy powerful. So they start fighting each other, they fight back and forth. Uh, cuts back to Gojo, who is fighting Miguel, and Miguel has a specific, um, cursed weapon from his family that makes it so that he won't just immediately die to Gojo, because it nullifies a lot of his techniques, um, which is how they would explain why Gojo isn't just immediately there right now, is that he is actually being kind of held back a little bit. Um, but they also show that, like, hey, if he wasn't being held back, this would be over in a second, because he, like, blasts an entire <laughs> cursed spirit from existence just by pointing at it uh, at the in the middle of the fight as well. Uh, they also show a bunch of the other teachers who are fighting. Uh, they even show everyone's favorite job squad for a bit second, as they are all fighting... Uh, it's really funny because the only one that actually isn't shown fighting any of the cursed spirits is the one on the broom. <laughs> so even in the movie <laughs> where there's a bunch of <laughs> lower, <laughs> like even Miwa gets a moment where she takes one down, the cursed broom girl does not get anything. <laughs> they didn't even give her a weak one to kind of attack. Um, but Toto is also there and he talks about like, no, we need to take these dudes now. I have a special with my idol that I need to go <laughs> check on right now. So they cut back to Yuta and Ghetto fighting, and they are going all out. Um, Ghetto's talking about specifically, like, hey, we need to take down the society as it is. And he's, like, trying to have a debate while Yuta is trying very hard to kill him um, because of what he's done to his friends. And Yuta kind of basically tells him, like, hey, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. I don't know if you're right or you're wrong. I just know that you hurt my friends and you need to die. Uh, he's also has full control of Rika now because there was a point where when he was saving um, his friends, uh, Rika started shaking Maki, but then he told her to basically, hey, calm down, that that woman saved my life, so please treat her gently. Um, and so um, as they're fighting, Ghetto is going, he unleashes one of his higher cursed uh, spirits, which is special grade, which is uh, Tamamo no Maze like imposter the only reason i know that is because it's related to a fago character i couldn't remember what they said afterward but it's based off of tamano tamamo no me uh which is the fox lady and he's gonna hit him with a huge um they translate it as maelstorm but i believe it's uzumaki is that the name of his giant technique yes okay so he's gonna hit him with that and at that point yuda says to rika hey i'll give you my everything i'll die right here with you um 
I love you, I just need the power to beat this guy. And that unlocks her fully. And Tanda says that he's basically sacrificing his life to do this. Um, but I don't think he says it at the moment. I think it's after it's done. So they end up having a clash as they shoot each other. They shoot their energy at each other. And Ghetto gets completely ass blasted out of the sky. There's an atomic bomb level detonation when they clash. It is so unbelievably over for him. And he walks away and his arm is gone. And he's clearly dying. But he's still saying like, oh man, Rika's so awesome. Uh, next time, I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally gonna get Rika, and everything's gonna be fine. Um, and then Gojo shows up, and he has kind of a final moments with, uh, with Ghetto. Um, and there's like a moment where they're talking to each other, and they don't show what they say to each other. Um, but Ghetto does say like, I kind of wish you just curse me out at the end. And I think he says like, Do you have any last things? Uh, to say and he says basically no matter what anyone says i really hate monkeys <laughs> which is the first thing he says and then he follows it up with the but i always loved everyone at jujutsu kai uh, jujutsu high um and he talks about the specific feelings of loneliness that he kind of had and the struggles he had to live in this kind of society where um it was really bad for the the sorcerers and he dies uh, they cut back to Yuda, who is waking up. Uh, Panda, Inumaki, and Maki are all fine. It looked like they had been really fucked up, but they were able to heal. Um, they talk about, like, he says, like, oh, yeah, I gave myself to Rika, basically. So that means that um, I'm going to have to die now, uh, I think. And then Rika turns back from her cursed spirit form back into her little go girl form. And Gojo shows up without his eye mask, and he says, hey, everyone actually here's what's happening and it's really funny because when they look at him without his eye mask they say who the hell are you and he goes like it's your beautiful teacher because <laughs> at this point yeah. of uh <laughs> which is really funny and he explains to him that you what you just said was correct he did in fact um curse rika uh yuda actually comes from a super like his bloodline, he's a descendant of Michikaze Sugawara, who was a big time sorcerer and one of the big three vengeful spirits. And he's a distant relative to the Gojo family. Um, so when Yuda saw Rika die, he rejected the death, and his cursed energy caused her to manifest as a vengeful spirit. Uh, Yuda basically falls to the floor and says, I can't believe it. Literally, everything was my fault. Um,. This is devastating. This this sucks so much. I hurt so many people. So many people died because of me. Um, and Rika says, like, she she gives him a hug and says, like, Yuda, listen, it's okay. Living with you was some of the best time that I had. The six years I spent with you were some of the best that I had. So don't feel um, don't feel bad. And so they, they hug, and Rika goes away because her curse has been uh, her curse has been lifted, and because she doesn't really have any recourse to have against uh, Yuda, he doesn't suffer anything from that. And the movie ends uh, right there as Yuda goes off to go have fun with his um, with his friends in uh jujutsu high and then all the way at the end credits we see him and he is in africa i believe and he's hanging out with miguel who was fighting uh uh gojo and as they're eating uh gojo shows up and miguel is very unhappy with <laughs> seeing gojo again and that's where the movie ends after that and that is a very very brief look into the movie itself um a summary so zen what do you like about this movie uh this movie bangs i i, I like basically everything about it um mm. i really like ghetto i like getting to see ghetto because you don't get to see a whole lot of uh ghetto in the series proper because he's obviously he dies in this movie mm -hmm. um I like the Night Parade of a Thousand Demons and how they expanded it quite a bit from the manga version. Because the manga version of this movie is only four chapters long. Yeah, I was about to um, say, so... Because when I looked it up, it looked like it was only four chapters. Did they, did they expand on a whole bunch of it? A ton of it, yeah. Mm. Um, like, the Nanami scene is only in the movie. That's not in the manga at all. Um, 
the Kyoto students, not in the manga at all. Um, I assume a lot of the the sensei is also like doing in and like having a, like a, their attack moves was also pretty much the added. whole sequences where everyone's like kind of getting their own little moment of like shine. Uh, yeah. were all added in in post <laughs> post manga world basically. <laughs> um, a way to pop the fans. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the Gojo Miguel fight is also expanded quite a bit. Um, I'm not. I don't remember exactly. I don't actually think you even see them fight in the really? manga. I, I know Miguel like faces off with him, mm-hmm. and Gojo's like, "All right, I'm gonna have to beat this dude's ass." And then I think it just cuts back to the school. That that would make sense because most people would just kind of assume, yeah, he's just gonna beat Miguel's ass now. <laughs> um, actually, I'm gonna i'm gonna look at that because i'm curious if that's actually true i don't believe that they fight but i i am gonna go and check on that because i want to know if that's the case sure sure yep so uh gojo does the scene where he pulls his bandages away Mm -hmm. and you see his eye uh and then it cuts back to the school and ghetto fights panda and them there Oh, okay, okay. And then chapter four, it just shows like the whole big fight with uh, Ghetto and Yuta. Um, Miguel and Gojo have one one page where he like whaps the 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 scene where he whaps Gojo's hand, and Gojo's like, "Oh, that that hit me through my thingy. It messes with my technique or whatever." Um. And then they cut away from it again, and they go through the entire closing of the fight with Ghetto and Yuta, and then Gojo shows up having already won. So yeah, barely anything. Oh, um, okay. Pretty much the whole night parade isn't really touched on at all. Uh, it's like a few pages at most. Um, also, Yuta's Black Flash is anime only. Oh, really? I was, well, I was... Black, well, remember, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero takes predates place before. the original series. Okay. Um, not just like it's a prequel, but like literally it was created before the original series was created. Um, so it's actually not a prequel. It's the just the starting point. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Black Flash as a concept did not exist then. Oh, okay. So okay. There is no Black Flash in the in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. It, it, it as a concept isn't created until Yuji uses it for the first time. Um, Man. So that was added into the anime. Um, I thought the animation was beautiful. I thought it looked great. Yeah. Uh, I really like Yuta versus Ghetto. I think that fight's super cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much the whole thing bangs. Like I, I it, Zero, like the whole section of Zero, is like a top three Jujutsu Kaisen arc for me. It's like somewhere up there with Hidden Inventory and uh, Shibuya. Mm. Yeah, I. Uh, this is my first time seeing it because, like, I, I think I've mentioned it multiple times. I never read Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I only read regular Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, so when Yuta actually does show up again in uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, I was maybe I felt like I was the only person going, "Who the hell is this? <laughs> I don't know who this is." <laughs> and everyone else uh, immediately knew who they were. So it was actually kind of cool to kind of see Yuta. I actually like how um, when Yuta comes back into the story of Jujutsu Kaisen, it's actually very similar to how he starts off. In this movie, where it's an execution, where instead of him being the um, person being executed, he's going off to go execute someone. But that was actually a cool kind of way to dial it all back in. Um, And actually getting to know Yuta for the first time uh, was really cool. Uh, I like how he kind of goes through the movie as a, you know, very, like, meek, scared individual. And then by the end of it, he's just an insane crazy swordsman dude by the time he's fighting ghetto and he is uh full on with rika he has turned uh, an extremely awesome corner um which is amazing to watch in a movie span of time um i like seeing a lot of the uh, i also like finally understanding what was up with rika because i don't i never fully understood what his actual power was um and so now that oh, you've seen a little bit further, he still has Rika, doesn't he? 
Do you want me to spoil this for you? Because it, it explains how later on. It's not a huge spoiler, but... Uh, yeah, they. I, I must have read it at some point, and I just didn't pick it up. Actually, if it's a oh, spoiler... Sorry, we'll... you're current in the manga, aren't you? Yeah, I am current in the manga. That's why I was like, oh, a so, lot of the yeah. Yuta stuff kind of go went over my head. We'll hold on to it. If it's a spoiler, I can ask you off screen. Because um, okay. they don't say it in the movie, and I thought that they would explain how he still has it, but um, if it's something... No, so we... technically, at the end of the movie, Yuta is grade 4. He's the lowest possible grade that you can oh, be. Oh, so he goes back down. Okay. So he goes from special grade with Rika down to grade four. Uh, and then when he gets Rika back, which I'll tell you about off the air, mm-hmm. uh, he goes back to special grade. Yeah, yeah, because when he uh, debuted in the episode, he definitely had Rika. So I was very curious to see what's going on with that. So yeah, we'll talk about that off screen. Uh, just to hold off for anyone who is actually curious themselves for the anime. Um, I know the answer. I just don't remember, remember it or it didn't click in my head because I didn't know who the hell Yuta was. So it didn't come up to me and say like, oh yeah, I just assumed he had this 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 lady with him. Um, I really liked uh, Inumaki, Maki, and Panda in this as well. Panda does not get his own special mission, but he does have like a little, a little fun moments like when he's with when um, Yuta's training with Maki. And he, he has, like, this special panda realization moment where he's like, oh, obviously, she's going to finally be with some. She might be with someone because they both like weapons. <laughs> so he, like, pulls him aside and says, like, hey, man, do you like big boobs or small boobs? And he's like, I never actually thought about it until now. And then they have, like, a little, like, love section to the side of it. It's like, I guess I like them big. And then panda gives her, like, the thumbs up. It's like, I think you got it in. <laughs> Which is very funny, and she goes like, "Can you please stop doing whatever the hell you're doing <laughs> and get back to being regular?" Um, I also like to see a little bit of Inumaki because, again, I was also kind of confused about a lot of Inumaki in general and how his character was supposed to be. Um, and actually, getting to see him and seeing about like, oh yeah, he has he had very similar issues with Yuta, where his power would make it extremely easy for him to accidentally hurt someone. So he's very understanding of what Yuta was going through, and they actually have like a really nice friendship that I thought was a uh, very cool, which is a cool thing to see to, and to do with someone that can only really talk in uh, rice ball ingredients. Uh-huh. <laughs> Didn't think it would be possible to actually have like a, a budding friendship with a man who can only say like Sal- Salmon Row, but they figured out a way. <laughs> um, yeah, and like you said, the animation here is just absolutely beautiful it is astounding while i was watching it on my computer i was like damn i actually wouldn't have minded seeing this in theaters <laughs> um it's funny because when you think of the conversion of a difference between if this had been an anime episode we maybe would have gone in a little bit more episodes actually i don't know because the film itself is actually kind of structured like episode itself like there's there feels like there's very clear points where it could have like cut away and been like, okay, the episode is over now, and then we move on to the other one. But it ended up working in a movie. I'm actually kind of curious to see what, how, if they had adapted it into the anime, would they have given it more episodes? So would you have seen maybe more of Yuta hanging out with Maki, Inumaki, and Panda? I don't know. But uh, it is interesting to think about. And yeah, of course, as always, all the Gojo stuff is really good. <laughs> Yeah, they they definitely gave Gojo a lot of extra shine because of how popular he is. Yep. Um, yeah. The, the whole night parade sequence is very cool. It is. Um, when he's fighting Miguel, it's maybe one of the greatest. And anim- I mean, at this point, anyone who has seen a, the GIF of Gojo just randomly attacking a black dude, it comes from this movie. <laughs> he just yes. uh, is unbelievably wailing on this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, one of the. Certainly, recently, the most iconic anime ass beatings. <laughs> it's really good. And it's really well done. And I actually like the fight of it itself, it's, itself as well. Because, like they said, Miguel is able to um, negate some of the stuff that he's got going. But then when they go into, like, Miguel's mind, he's like, Damn, this guy's, like, actually taking away my uh, my power the more I fight with him. Because he's actually, the, the curse tool that he's using is slowly, like, withering away as he keeps fighting Gojo. And he actually complains at one point. He's like, do you know how long it took my, ans- <laughs> my ancestors to weave this thing? And it's going away. And he had, like, at most, I think, 12 minutes when he was, uh, when he was stalling him. 
So it was a very cool fight. I'm pretty sure Gojo's response to that also is, I do not care. <laughs> yeah, he did not care at all. <laughs> very fitting. Um, and yeah, it was a really, really good-ass movie. And all the, the ghetto stuff was also really well done. It was kind of nice to actually see the... As we were watching the um, the anime and I was seeing the ghetto backstory again, I remembered like, oh yeah, I never actually got the ending for ghetto i just the because i didn't read zero i didn't know what happened to him and all that other stuff so it was actually nice seeing how he got beat um it really kind of seems like his plan maybe wasn't the greatest in the world (laughs) because his entire idea was like well obviously if i just have this uh cursed spirit boom i just win and then I don't think it ever clicked on him. I have to fight the thing as well. And so the, the it just completely beats the shit out of him once it actually gets to full power, even if he was using a lot of power himself. Like, by the end of it, like, he's he's got no arm. Like, clearly, Yuta won on this exchange, and Yuta yeah. had only recently done it. So it was maybe not the greatest plan in the world, but maybe he, at that point, was at the edge of his rope. It was like, this is literally the only thing. If I had this, this is all I needed. Because honestly, as long as um, their side had Gojo, it really was an uphill battle to fight back. Um, It seemed like even in when they briefly show in the movie, it seems the only thing that was stopping... um, The only thing that was keeping Ghetto alive is that he was best friends with Gojo. Because otherwise he would have been... If it was anyone else who would have done it, he would have likely instantly died when Gojo had the chance to kill him. So, it was really cool. It was really nice to see all that. And, uh, yeah, this movie is really damn good. Um, and now I really like Yuta now. I'm, 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 I'm on team Yuta now. I don't know how anyone could dislike Yuta. Yeah, Yuta's kind of the goat. I love Yuta. He's, between Yuta and Gojo, it's very close as to which ones are my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen characters. They're, like, neck and neck all the time. Yeah, yeah, he, the, like everything about him here just made me like him and i loved him absolutely and i already had seen that he does a lot of cool stuff coming up in the manga but it definitely does change a lot of it now that i know a little bit more of the character it also makes a lot of the weird random criticisms that i've seen of him which i don't fully understand other than i think it might just be weird brain rotted people who don't know <laughs> it, yeah it's <laughs> just it's like, memes mostly yeah that's what i assume it's the it's the i better keep my ass in this office which i can understand as a funny like <laughs> way of talking about a character but it just doesn't feel like those specific jokes ever hit with yuda at all because he really is insane uh and strong as well without even trying in this one which is funny enough <laughs> uh i also really like that moment where he's just like the the thing that ended up winning the day was um was love because he says at the beginning is like when he cursed her uh what is a bigger curse than love itself and then he uses that specific thing to actually take down ghetto at the end and the love was so strong between them it literally caused like a a mini atomic bomb as it went off and it was like pink energy everywhere it was very cool very well done uh most of um, most people j- uh, joke that like a lot of shonen animes can be taken down like most people win because of the power of friendship or the power of love this one just actively says yes it was 100 percent. the reason you're losing now is because i really love rika so <laughs> eat shit and die <laughs> <laughs> and love is an atomic bomb yes <laughs> just so so accurate <laughs> so accurate to so many feelings um and yeah that is Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Anything else that you have to say about the movies, then? Uh, no, not really. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, the song! The song oh, goes yes. so hard. Yes, the song is very good. The um, song goes so hard. Yeah, I have to look that up afterwards. It was really annoying because I had very limited time to watch it. And I was listening to the song. I was like, damn it, if, if I pause this movie, I'm not going to make enough time to actually record Shut It Archive. So I had to just kind of sit there and listen. I was like, I have to just make a note. Find this song later. <laughs> really well done song. Um, Man. So I have a question for you now, Zen. Seeing how well this movie is... And seeing how 
<laughs> much stuff left we have in Jujutsu Kaisen, do you think that there is actually going to be another movie for Jujutsu Kaisen coming out? Or is it literally just... I think so, probably. Yeah. You think so? I think so, yeah. Mm. I don't think it'll be Gojo vs. Tsukuna. I think that that's... You can't make that into Maybe a movie. Maybe people will like meme that into existence by talking about it enough that they'll go like, oh, people want that. Mm. Um... I don't I don't honestly know what it would be. That's kind of the thing is that there's not really like a good point for it because there's nothing that else that's really that self-contained. Like honestly, if you wanted to do one, it would have been like hidden inventory because that's also very self-contained. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very but I, I think just from a monetary perspective, they're going to want to do another one. They're just going to want the you know, the the publicity and the box office cash and all that good stuff. Yeah, it would make sense. I would really maybe, like... Maybe it'll be the Zenin extermination arc. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that's, like, all on its own, you know? Bro, uh, if misogyny comes to theaters, <laughs> the inn, the highest... Well, yeah, well, well, it's, not, it's not... Well, I guess the, the, that would be the, Naoya's debut. I was it? about to say, it's Naoya's debut, and they're gonna have to expand. They're about to give this man 20 minutes of unfiltered <laughs> misogynist... <laughs> Like, all the extra stuff we got here of, like, really cool moments with characters are just gonna spend 20 minutes of him just crying women. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very... We'll see. I do think that they would likely... Like we said at the beginning, there's, this movie made so much money that it would make sense that they would want to make another one. I still kind of wish... It's really weird to me, but the only movies that seem to be able to get away with making non-canon anime movies now, is just One Piece. Like, One Piece makes uh, movies that are, like, vaguely in canon, but not really kind of back in doesn't, the day. Doesn't like, when My Hero do that? No, because remember, they made that stupid movie canon. Oh, that's right. They, like, retroactively canonized yeah, it. Yeah, th that's what I'm saying. Like, not even Dragon that's Ball does right. it anymore, because uh, Resurrection of F and... Uh, the Broly movie and um, Battle of Gods will all became part of the canon. Um, so the only one that really can get away with it is One Piece. And they have like, oh yeah, technically this could fit into canon. But a lot of it is like, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. It's not like in the old days where it was like Dragon Ball where uh, Tree of Might takes place during the Namek saga somehow. <laughs> and everyone's still alive. <laughs> Or it's really weird. They don't do that stuff anymore, which is a shame because I think I actually would really like that for Jujutsu Kaisen. Just the ability to see a lot of characters because one of my favorite parts of it actually was that moment where, you know, based off of where the current anime is, is a lot of these characters don't look like this anymore <laughs> or are not around. Um, so it was a nice way to just go like, oh man, they're back. Yeah, everyone, everyone's here, and it's just kind of feel good and nice. And I feel like a lot of anime movies nowadays just, ex unless you're One Piece, you have to be canon to the story. And I guess Spy X Family, actually. I think they're making a movie, and it's not based off of an arc. So really weird. I don't know what chooses Yeah, it. yeah, I think the movie, the, the something white, like, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, yeah, but it's not based off the anything from the manga chapters, from from what I can. Oh, tell. it's Spy X Family Code White, and yeah, I think it's I think it's original. Yeah, I guess because maybe it's Spy Family is technically a comedy, they can get away with it. It's like, I the, our action series actually everything has to be canon, but if you're a comedy series, who cares? <laughs> do yeah, do, you do what you, do you want, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like there's less. Uh, I guess there's less like interspur like what's the word interconnectivity there mm -hmm. especially in something like uh spy family where it's just <clears throat> they do a silly thing today <laughs> like spy family is basically a sitcom it is a sitcom it's just a sitcom where uh occasionally there's a huge action scene <laughs> that's the only there sometimes there's some deep political talk for like actually just get yeah, you right exactly like a sitcom <laughs> Because I was going to say, that also happens in sitcoms where suddenly it gets uh, very political. But alright. We'll be interested to see where it goes from here. But that is it for Jujutsu Kaisen Zero the movie. And that is also it for Jujutsu Kaisen for at least another year or two. Um, because we don't know when season... Actually, we do know when season 3 is going to come up, come up. It might be actually two years from now. Uh, let me double check that. I definitely knew it in the last time we recorded Jujutsu Kaisen, <laughs> but it's been a bit. So give me a sec as I look up, 
It sounds like, because next is going to be culling game. Sounds like they expect it. Expect later information on it somewhere around 2024, so that would make me assume that it comes back sometime in 2025. Is their hope, I guess. We'll see. Based off of the last state we saw with the animators, if they're actually going to be able to finish anything in time by 2025, but... Yeah, that's it for Jujutsu Kaisen for now. Isn't it sad, Zen? No more talking about Jujutsu Kaisen for the time being. At least on your show, you yeah, get to keep talking weird. about it. Yeah, well, you know, for better or worse, I guess. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> get ready to talk about it again when he gets animated. <laughs> By that point, a lot of gestation will have happened. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of, it's time to do the cleanup for this. Obviously, next week, since there's no more Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, expect hopefully Kuroko's basketball. Uh, my work th will hopefully be a little bit less. Actually, I don't want to want to know if I want to promise next week because uh, Infinite Wealth comes out uh, like a dragon Infinite Wealth, and that game is uh, very long because it's a JRPG based off of the Yakuza series. So. I would have to take some time off specifically to see it, but maybe for Shonen Archive I will. But hopefully hopefully next Wednesday we will be back with um, Gintama and Kuroko's Basketball, and we will hyper-focus on finishing Kuroko's Basketball because I want to finish Kuroko's Basketball. Yes. <laughs> now that we have uh, these two, and then from there, after we finish Kuroko, we will figure out what is the next series, but I have a feeling that we the, the signs of Yu-Gi-Oh! are calling to us and we need to get back to GX. That is my current gut feeling, at least. There's a part of me that badly wants to get back to GX as well and see what's going on in there. But yeah, if uh, if you want more Zen content, you can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks a whole bunch about um, Shonen Jump weekly releases that he's seen, <laughs> such as Jujutsu Kaisen. So if you want to see him talk about what's currently going on in the manga form of Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, I would suggest going over there. Though, funny enough, they there was like a three-week break where there was no new manga chapter for Jujutsu Kaisen. So maybe it's kind of iffy, depending on the schedule, if you'll hear him talk about it. But in general, you should go over to his channel and <laughs> check it out. Um, if you want more me content... There's my channel. Um, we did recently do a stream for Final Fantasy XIV that I have to remember to go release. Um, that thing was over four hours long. So it takes a bit for it to upload completely and for it to be 100% done. <laughs> but it should hopefully be done pretty soon by the time uh, you hear this. And yeah, in general, I do for Go videos and I do occasionally other stuff when I remember. Um... And that is it for Shonen Archive this week. Well, not this week because we have to talk about Gintama, but that's it for this episode of Shonen Archive. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I was like, damn, that's right, we're not done talking. We have to, For the people watching this, it's done for them. Uh, but no, we have to go talk about Gintama now. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. As always, if you want to show support, you can always leave a like and comment. And uh, just honestly, just watch the videos is good enough for us. This channel is supported by Fago, so you don't have to worry too much. I will occasionally remember to release a Fago video. <laughs> and those make it very easy to justify doing these, because I'm like, I know that Fago got my back, and it lets me do videos like this. <laughs> it's the perfect ecosystem. All right, that's enough. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.